But first off, we need to realize this. Faith has no plan B. Why? Because faith requires total commitment to whatever, whatever you're looking at, whatever the faith, whatever the vision that God has given you. And let me tell you, your vision should be first and foremost what is in the Bible about what Jesus has done for you and in you and wants to do through you. So number one, your first vision actually should be to be conformed to the image of Christ. Now that doesn't mean walking around in a robe and sandals and that kind of thing. It means living his life. He said, if you're going to follow me, you got to take up my life. And he actually said, if you'll take up my higher life, then you'll first lay down your lower life. So he considers whatever we do other than his life a lower life. Well, what was his life? His life was given so that he could give it, not just in death, of course, that was the end of it, but he gave his whole life. He, his life was given to serving people. And he served them by, by literally meeting their needs, whatever that need was. If he came, came upon a funeral, the need was to raise the dead. That's what he did. If he came upon a sick person, he healed them. If people were hungry and he saw it, he said, all right, sit everybody down, let's feed them. So he always met whatever need was necessary. And so that's our life. That is what we're to look at. We're to look at it. And I remember T.L. Osborne used to say, uh, see a need, meet a need. He said, to see a need is to be led. And I used to look at that and go, wow, that's not what I've ever heard. But then they would say things and I would look at the scriptures and T.L. Osborne was, was always saying, look, once you see that need, then you can meet that need. And then the scripture says that God said, I will guide you with my eye. Now think about that. God said he would guide us with his eye. What does that mean? That means that if, if we see something, that we have to assume that he's guiding us to see it. And if we see it, now it becomes our responsibility to do something about it. We cannot blind our own eyes and hide our eyes to things and act as though we don't know. There's many times my wife will tell me about a situation. And I told her, I said, why did you tell me? And she said, well, you know, I just thought you should know because, of, and I'm like, now that I know, I got to do something about it. Why? Because I can't just, if it's in your power to do good, and if you don't do it, that's sin. I don't want to do that. So I want to do what I, what's in, my, in the power of my hand to do. Now, the Bible said, if any man asks you, you know, give to any man that asks you. When I read that, I'm like, uh-oh. And then God showed me how to live that out. And, and literally, all these little things started adding up together. But I realized there is a thread that runs through it all, and the principle is the same. That if we trust God, then we can see where he wants us to go, and we can go wherever he, he wants us to go, and there is no such thing as impossible. I love, again, and it's funny, <laughs> we're John G. Lake Ministries, and I quote Smith Wigglesworth more than anybody else. He, he had better sayings. They were just more accurate, you know, more, you know, just they just hit. And matter of fact, I've got a couple of them I want to run past you here in just a minute because it's, it's good for people to hear. But Wigglesworth would, he, 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 matter of fact, one of the statements he made, I'll just go ahead and tell you. He said, if it's in the Bible, you don't even have to pray about it. It's to be believed and acted upon. Think about that. He said, it is an insult to God to ask for power once you have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's an insult to God. Why? Because God said, you shall receive power. Dunamis. Miraculous ability. And actually, that word dunamis means more than just miraculous ability. It's just a, that's just a simple way of saying it. But when it says, be strong in the Lord, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, that word there is, in, it's actually a long word. It's, it's dunamis with an addition, you know, a beginning, a prefix, and a suffix on it. And the word is in dunamuo. And it means to be empowered with a power, now get this, where everywhere else in secular society where that word was used, it meant the, the entire power and force 
of an invading army. That's the power you're supposed to be strong in. The power that you have in you is the entire force and strength of the invading army of heaven in you that you can apply to any situation. Now, many scholars tell us that, you know, Satan fell and a third of the angels went with him and, and okay, if, you know, all that's true, then okay, then there's still two thirds of the angels on God's side. So you deal with a demon? You think that's a problem? That's not a problem. That's one demon. You say, well, maybe it's a legion. Okay, let's say it's a legion. You, you probably wouldn't run into a legion, but if you did, now you've got a legion, and yet that's still just, you know, depending on how big a legion, you, how big you want to say a legion is, because I've heard estimates anywhere from 2,000 to 6,000, so you could go anywhere from there. But if you want to say that, let's say the maximum 6,000 demons. And you go, wow, but that's 6,000 demons. Yeah, but we've still got two-thirds of all the angels that ever were. And, and the power that's in you, that in Dunamuo, that is the entire force of all of the rest of the angels and the power of God that in, comes into those angels and that all of that power and force can be directed at that one instant the minute you engage it. What does that mean? That means the devil ain't got a chance. He can't resist you. And it seems that many Christians think that we're under siege. Well, I'm just holding on. I'm just holding on, trying to make it. We're not told to just hold on. We're told to advance. He said that the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. He didn't say, well, hold on to the back of the gates of the church because the devil's trying to kick in the door. No, he said, we're overcomers. We're more than conquerors. This is the life we're supposed to lead. We're, we're not supposed to lead some beaten, broken down, you know, praying, you know, Jesus, come quickly and get us out of here. If anything, you ought to be saying, hey, hang on a second. Hang on. We want you to come, but hang on. Why? Because there's still some people to get saved. There's still some loved ones I got to get in here. Don't, don't come just yet. I want, I want to see you, Lord, but hang on because I've still got some stuff I got to do. I haven't cast out enough devils yet. We haven't seen enough sick healed yet. Why? Because every time somebody gets a devil cast out of them, Jesus gets glory and he turns around and gives the glory to the Father. And every time we get somebody healed, God gets the glory. Why? What are we doing? We're letting our light so shine before men that they'll see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. But that means a different mindset. You say, but yeah, but Kurt, you don't know my life. My life is one of constant battle. Well, your life is going to be one of constant battle. Why? Because you're supposed to be a good soldier of Jesus Christ. You didn't enlist into the Peace Corps. You enlisted into Heaven's Marine Corps. That's your job here. To find what's wrong and fix it. And you can't do that with a defeated mentality. You can't do it with a, the idea that everything can hurt you. Jesus made it very clear. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Why? He, because he's given you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the ability of the enemy. Do you get that? See, those aren't just words. Those are facts. Facts to be believed. Believed. 